You're watching 7 News. Let's return to the developing fire crisis in Perth's hills. Jeff Parry is above the Parkerville fire zone in the 7 helicopter. Jeff, what's the latest on this fire emergency? It is still developing an emergency. Blake, let's take you down there. And as you can see, homes are still burning. Uh, this one we spotted just uh, a few minutes ago. Um, this is in the in the Parkerville area where a lot of the flames had already gone through. You can see it's got a hole there on uh, on the end of what we believe is an L-shaped house there. Um, we haven't seen the water bombers on it yet, but um, this is whether this is spotted. But this is sort of an area that had largely been burnt through. When I was up here a few hours ago, uh, you couldn't see, you could hardly see the ground of these, these sorts of. Uh, with this, with this much detail because of the amount of smoke. See, it's, now, it's really picking up now. It's gone black. This is the sort of area we thought the, the house, the flames might have uh, uh, actually gone through. In fact, they have. A lot of it's been burned out. A lot of the houses around here have been lu lucky and have been saved this afternoon. But for some reason, uh, this one is now going up in flames. Um, further east, which is the way the wind is pushing uh, the fire. We've been up there a short time ago. The helitax are up there. The, the aerial water bombers are up there. And they're still trying to hit flame which is in the bush on the ground uh, they're still uh, they're still having trouble with that thick smoke which means sometimes they can't get into some of these areas um, perhaps uh, they might have a, they might see these pictures and they might come back and have a go at this one but that's um, that that's a house uh, uh, fully pretty much under control of that fire so um, that that's going to go up we would think Blake back to you Thanks, Jeff. Rebecca O'Donovan is at the Mundaring Evacuation Centre where dozens of families are tonight waiting for any information on whether they still have homes. Rebecca, you're joined by the Mundaring Shire President. That's right, Blake. Helen Dullard joins me here at the evacuation centre. And it's been a long wait for a lot of residents today. And Helen, there's been quite a few rumours. Can you tell us exactly how many homes have been destroyed or damaged? Uh, no, I can't tell you. We don't know that yet. It, you're right, it has been a long wait for a number of people, uh, but we hope to know at 7.30 tonight. Sure. And Helen, there's been a lot of heartache, but a lot of community support as well shown today. Mm -hmm. The heartache has been sad to witness, but the community spirit that's almost kicked in alongside it has been just fantastic to see. We've had local people bringing in food, fruit, water. We've had offers of uh, personal homes for accommodation tonight, knowing that people will not be able to go home. Uh, we've had the Bendigo Bank uh, already put on line to us that they are prepared to manage a fundraising exercise uh, as they did for the 2J fire. Uh, they'll work with the Salvation Army and the Shire and we'll be working with the community and distributing any funds that are collected. So it's just fantastic and I guess for me the culmination of the community spirit would be our volunteers today that have been out fighting. They've just been fantastic. And do we know at this stage what time residents will be able to go back and look at their homes? Uh, no we don't but as I said it won't be tonight and uh, hopefully for some it'll be tomorrow but for others it might even be longer. Thanks Helen. Blake, it's been a long night for residents and an even longer night awaits them as uh, they wait for news. There's been a second evacuation centre set up at Brown Park in Swanview and um, there will be a briefing there at 7.30 tonight. Blake. Okay, thanks Rebecca. Rebecca O'Donovan at the Mundaring Evacuation Centre. Two men have been